really explicitly, there was a new immigration law after World War II um, in 1965 that de-racialized immigration law um, and took away the racial quotas and the racial restrictions on immigration. Um, but then the bigger question is why, that, and that was 1965, it was called the Hart Seller Act or the Immigration and Nationality Act. But the bigger question is, so why did the United States come around to like de-racializing its immigration law um, in 1965? Well, a, a couple of, a bunch of things are happening um, at home and abroad that, that push the US in this direction. So, you know, World War II um, in the United States was, uh, was conceptualized or understood as a war against Nazism and even a war against racism. That is, the Nazis were um, seen as kind of uniquely uh, bad people because they were trying to purify their population and get rid of people they thought didn't belong, even though they're certainly not the only country that's ever done that. But um, but but that was like the 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 World War II propaganda is like, oh, the Nazis are so terrible because they're doing this. Um, and then it was really hard to look in the mirror and say, oh, that's actually the same thing that we've been doing. <laughs> um, uh, so that was part of it. Um, part of it is that, you know, by the time of World War II, the European countries, not Nazi Germany, but the ones who were our allies, Britain and France, um, had colonized practically the entire world. Um, Asia, Africa, South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia. Um, and a lot of these colonies, the Caribbean, um, a lot of these colonies also wanted to hold the Europeans, the British and the French especially, up to their supposedly uh, you know, Britain and France were saying, oh, countries shouldn't conquer other countries. Countries shouldn't aim, shouldn't try to racially purify themselves. And then all the people in Africa and the Caribbean and South Asia and Southeast Asia were saying, well, what about us? Like, you're the ones who colonized us and told us that we're not as good as you and still are trying to rule us. So there's anti-colonial uprisings all over the world against mostly British and French colonialism. Um, and inside the United States, there's also big movements for racial justice, the civil rights movement. And again, people of color saying, you know, look, you claim that you're fighting against racism in Germany, but what about racism here? What about the white supremacy and exclusion of populations of color here? Um, And then there's the Cold War. So now Germany's not the enemy anymore. Now the United States is trying to uh, claim that the biggest enemy to justice and peace in the world is the Soviet Union. But it's a little inconvenient because the Soviet Union is actually supporting all of these liberation struggles. And the United States and Britain and France are opposing them. So the United States is trying to juggle this, um, you know, trying to look good on the world stage, understanding that looking good means that we really have to move away from white supremacy and racism and uh, make our claims that we want to treat people equally real. And that's all of that is the context in which the new immigration laws passed in, um, in 1965.